Today we will be talking about inspecting cargo hoses, pipings, fittings, and transfer procedures. When going out on a vessel to inspect cargo-related equipment, you want to make sure that you have the appropriate PPE and protective equipment. Hard hat, life vest, foregas meter, steel-toed boots in order to protect yourself against any hazards that you may encounter in the shipyard or on the vessel. Each vessel that's conducting a transfer operation must have a person in charge or PIC. This person is going to be designated in writing and must have the knowledge and experience to be able to conduct the transfer operation uh, safely and effectively. This person uh, needs to be able to communicate with the crew, um, which is especially important on foreign vessels. A vessel that has the carrying capacity of 250 barrels or more must have transfer procedures on board. These transfer procedures need to be vessel specific and not in any sort of generic format. The contents of these transfer procedures are outlined in the regulations. The end of the piping for the cargo line will contain closure devices such as a valve and then a blank flange to prevent any necessary leaks. All inspections and maintenance that are conducted on cargo hoses and cargo piping need to be documented and those records need to be maintained for three years. The date of manufacture for the hose also needs to be available, but it doesn't necessarily have to be stamped on the hose itself. The maximum allowable working pressure of the hose must be labeled or stamped on the hose, but the maximum allowable working pressure test can be recorded elsewhere. The name of the product which the hose is service must be labeled on the hose. For oil products, it can simply just be oil service, but for other hazardous material, it could be labeled hazardous material and then a symbol or some sort of indication as to which specific product that hose is used for. So each cargo hose must be labeled with certain information. For example, this hose must have the type of product that it services and its maximum allowable working pressure. It may also have, but is not required to, the date of the last maximum allowable working pressure test. If containment is not practical for the transfer operation, there must be an automatic back pressure shutoff device in the system. At the ends of the loading manifold, there must be a containment area to catch any leaks or spills. The amount of containment um, or the capacity of the containment area depends on the diameter of the piping. Each cargo hose located on board must undergo a periodic pressure test and these records must be made available uh, for the marine inspector. When on board, you'll want to inspect the condition of the hose. You're looking for any sort of deterioration, any sort of kinks or soft spots, or any areas that look like the hose may not be able to hold the product that it needs to. To summarize inspecting cargo hoses, piping, fittings, and transfer procedures, we identified any hazards, cautions, and PPE when inspecting transfer hoses, piping, and fittings, verified qualified person in charge designated, verified validity of transfer procedures, examined closure devices, verified required records, verified hose minimum design burst pressure, verified hose maximum allowable working pressure, verified non-metallic hoses are suitable for their product transferred, verified hose markings and logs, verified back pressure shutoff nozzle, verified means for blinking off disconnected hoses, verified discharge piping systems and arrangements, verified test and inspection records, inspected hose assemblies, the conditions of the piping and hoses and conditions of the fittings and supports, verifying no leaks, bulging or wastage. If you have any further questions, please contact your verifying officer.